Algebra 2 Unit 3 Study Guide, the Concept 16 Problems, so 14 to the end. <laughs> so on 14, we are just asked to factor completely. So I rewrote the polynomial, and we don't need to set it equal to 0 because we're not solving. So the first thing you want to do is factor out a greatest common factor, and you should notice that each term has an x in it. Then you're going to write what you have left once you divide that single x out of each of those terms. Now look inside the parentheses to factor that remaining polynomial. It has three terms, so you're looking for two polynomials that will multiply to give you negative 16 and combine to give you negative 6. This is just a little organizer that I use for this. So I know 8 and 2, and then I'm going to make my 8 negative. Now since my a value is 1, that means that I can go right to my two sets of parentheses for factoring. So I'll write x minus 8 and x plus 2. I want to bring down that x because it's all three of those pieces are part of the factors of that polynomial. <clears throat> On the second one we have 5x to the fourth minus 30x squared. So I can factor out a 5 I can also factor out two x's, or x squared. What I write is what I have left from these two terms once I divide out 5x squared, which will be x squared minus 6. I look at what's left in there, and I see if I can factor that. It's not a difference of squares, and I can't think of two numbers that will multiply to give me negative 6 and combine to give me 0. So this is factored completely. On number 15, we need to solve by factoring, but before we, sol we solve, we're going to predict how many roots. So you look at the degree of the function. It is degree 3, so that means that it's going to have 3 roots, a combination of real and non-real. So now to solve it by factoring, since I have four terms, I'm going to factor by grouping. So I group those first two terms together, and I divide out an x squared. I'll be left with x plus 1. And then in my second two terms, I can factor out a negative 9. And I should be left with the same thing that's in my first set of parentheses. Now between those, that entire expression, x plus 1, is my common factor. And what I have left is x squared minus 9. Now since I was asked to factor completely, I'm going to factor this difference of squares, x squared minus 9, which will factor as x plus 3 times x minus 3. And then to solve that, I'm going to set each of these equal to 0 and solve. So my first solution is negative 1. My second solution is negative 3. And my third solution is positive 3. On the next problem, I look at the degree. It's degree 3. So that means that we will have three roots. Since it has four terms, I'm going to factor by grouping. So I'm going to group my first two terms together. And I can factor out an x squared. I'll just be left with x minus 2. And then I can factor, ooh, a negative 25, and I'll be left with x minus 2. And then my common factor is x minus 2, and I'm left with x squared minus 25. Now I can keep factoring, so I'm going to factor that difference of squares, the x squared minus 25. So that will factor as x plus 5 times x minus 5. Then I'm going to set each of them equal to 0, just like I've done before. So my first solution is positive 2. My second solution is negative 5. And my third solution is positive 5. On number 16, let's de describe that end behavior. So the two things we need to look at for end behavior are the degree of the function and then the leading coefficient. So the degree is the biggest exponent. In this case, it's 4. 
and so my degree is even. So my end behavior will be the same. The leading coefficient is positive 5, so that means my end behavior will be up, up, and you can also write that using the two arrows. In my next function, the degree is 3, because that's the biggest exponent, so that is odd. So my end behavior will be opposite. Leading coefficient is negative 3, so it's like a negative slope. The end behavior will be up on the left and down on the right. We can write that as up, down. So what happens when a zero has a multiplicity? That means it comes from a factor of a power of two. So a multiplicity of two. That is an even power. So what's going to happen is that the curve will bounce at that point. It will return back to the lower quadrants or back to the upper quadrants from where it came from. And then if it has a multiplicity of three, so if the power of the factor was the third power, that is an odd power, and the curve of that function is going to cross through that point. So in number 18, we're going to graph this polynomial. We're going to go through the entire process. So let's talk about the leading coefficient and the degree. It is in standard form. The leading coefficient is 1, and the degree is 3. So its end behavior, since this is positive and this is odd, will be down on the left, up on the right. So on your graph, let's also put a down arrow on the left and an up arrow on the right. Now to solve it, to find the zeros, we're going to set it equal to zero, factor and solve. So notice your greatest common factor is x. So when you factor that out, you're left with x squared minus 2x minus 3. Then you're looking for two numbers that I'll multiply to give you negative 3 and combine to give you negative 2. So negative 3 and 1. So you bring down just the first x and then we can put the negative 3 and the 1 right in our set of parentheses. Now I look before I solve, I'm going to look at the power of each of these factors. So they're all to the first, so they are all odd powers. So they are all going to cross at the zeros. So x minus 3 will cross through at positive 3 and x plus 1, that's going to cross through at negative 1. So now let's graph it. So we can graph our three points and let's place our zeros in this blank. So our zeros are 0, 3, and negative 1. So negative 1, 0, and 1, 2, 3. So they're all crossing, so we'll start down on the left, we'll go through and make a smooth curve back through our second point, and then a smooth curve back through our third point. And that's a good sketch of the graph. All right, on number 19, we're going to do the same as on number 18. We're going to start with the leading coefficient and the degree. So it's in standard form. We have a degree of 3 and leading coefficient of positive 1. So since this is positive and odd, our end behavior is going to be down, up. And so on our graph space, we can put a down arrow and an up arrow. Now to solve, set it equal to zero. Notice you have four terms, so let's factor by grouping. When we group the first two together, we can factor out an x squared, and we'll be left with x plus 4. We can factor out a negative 4, and we'll also be left with x plus 4. That's our common expression, so we can factor out the x plus 4, and we're left with x squared minus 4. We can keep factoring, and we'll be left with x plus 4, and then we can factor x squared minus 4 as a difference of squares. Now before we solve, let's look at the powers of these factors. 
So notice they're all to the first power. Those are all odd, so they're going to cross. So if I set them each equal to zero and solve, I'm going to have a zero at negative four. Subtract my two over at negative two and at positive two. So these are all odd factor powers and so all of them are going to cross through. All right, so on our graph space, we want those three points at negative four, negative two, and positive two. We're crossing through all of them, starting down on the left. So we go through and just do a nice smooth curve back, through and a nice smooth curve back. Again, this is just a sketch of the graph. Um, you don't have to be exact as far as how far your curves go up and down.